You may want to create movie clips that contain their own controls, such as buttons. Then you can take the movie clip and put it onto a timeline and it's all ready to go. In this case, each instance contains its own controls, its own action script as a complete unit. Okay, the start and stop examples are here. The start example has the controls on the main timeline and they're controlling a movie clip that has no actions in it at all and just plays on its own and the completed one we move the controls to be part of the movie clip and we actually put two of those movie clips on the same timeline scene one timeline that is and we reduce the size of one uh, all the controls work the same in each one of these it's just a matter of where we deployed the um, controls and and uh, how we use the movie clips so let's get started to see how this works so we'll open up the starting file and you may want to save that under a practice name and let's take a quick look at what we have inside we've seen a lot of this before but let's really quick inside the library we have our four buttons from the common library they are on scene one on the controls layer and let me just get the selection tool here and then each one of these has an instance name as you've seen before and for example the play button has a play underscore button or the step backwards one says step next underscore button we also have a rotating movie clip on the last layer and it's got an instance name of rotating underscore mc we're actually not going to need this anymore we'll see as we go and in the library happens to be this red rotating rectangle rotating clockwise clip and we'll get to see that a little bit more as we move along and then just another quick look at the actions so open up the actions panel and inside of here we have the play button instance and the stop button instance and so on uh, talking to the rotating underscore MC instance of the movie clip from the library we're playing it and stopping it and stepping it one frame forward one frame back next frame pre frame are some of the actions that we've learned in the past and we'll just test this just to make sure you know what it does it automatically starts playing there's no stop actions anywhere to stop this and then the buttons do uh, what they do they step forward step back play or stop the playback head for the movie clip okay so let's get started what we're going to do first is we're going to duplicate the movie clip so this one is a movie clip we know it does something works fine so make a copy of it so right mouse click in the library choose duplicate and we'll name this one by changing the suffix to say with buttons and then we'll go ahead and edit it and now we're editing this new uh, clip and this is the 120 frame rotation animation that we've seen playing I know the layers we're going to need so come down here to the animation layer and click the insert layer icon and what we'll do is just call this one controls we'll move the buttons to this layer and we can see that it has a keyframe that runs all the way to the end and we do want that because once we put the buttons here we want to see them through the entire animation and one more layer which will be our action script and I'll just name this AS as an abbreviation and the actions will only occur on the keyframe even though it extends to the end we could shorten this it would make any difference to what we're going to accomplish and we'll head back to scene one and click the controls layers only keyframe and as a note when you click a keyframe it selects all the objects that are on that keyframe is an easy way to select them and we're gonna right mouse click and choose cut then we'll go back to our movie clip that we're editing the one with the buttons and we'll click on the controls keyframe controls layer keyframe and then we'll right mouse click over the stage area and choose paste and I'm just going to use the shift and down arrow keys on my keyboard and then the arrow keys and just position these somewhat under the actual animated movie clip and then uh, then we'll do is just select these I want you to see that the action the um, instance names came along as we did the copy and paste next we want to bring the actions in so we'll go back to scene one and we'll select the keyframe on the actions layer and open up the actions window 
and I'm going to select everything. I'm going to use the shortcut key for this. Uh, it's Control A for Windows. Uh, you can do Edit and Select All, and then I'm going to right mouse click and choose uh, Cut. And then I'll go back to the library and go back to the red rectangle rotating clockwise with buttons. And uh, it should say controls down here. If this pin happens to be one way or the other, it might need to be unlocked. But basically, you want to be editing the first tab down here and then paste. And I'm going to undo that because I did not select the keyframe I wanted them on. So I use the undo key shortcut and click on the action scripts and then click in here, the action script frame I mean, and layer. And then I'll do a paste again. And now I have the actions on the first keyframe of the action script layer for the movie clip. And what I don't need is the rotating underscore MC period anywhere because we're going to play, stop, and step forward and step backwards on the same timeline. So I'm going to highlight these. And you might like to try the search and replace feature in this window. There's an icon up here with a uh, spyglass on it, or a magnifying glass, I should say or control F and I have the text that was highlighted put in here automatically and I'm going to replace with nothing I'll just use the replace button and do these one at a time to be safe rather than replace all and there we are we did them all so now we just have the actions without a movie clip name in front of them and that's because we're controlling this timeline the timeline that the actions are actually on and the action script is on so we're done with this. We can close the actions window. And let's go back to scene one. And we can remove these layers that are no longer containing anything. So I'll just come down here to the layers panel and select each one and use the trash can icon to get rid of them. We don't need this movie clip. This is the original movie clip. And so we could swap it out with the one we're going to use. I'm just going to use delete on my keyboard and delete it. And I'm going to drag in the new one, the one with the buttons, and I'll put two of them on here. One on the left side, approximately center, and I'll drag another one in on the right side. And I'll use the shortcut key Q for the free transform tool. And just reduce the size of the second one. And you can see all the controls are inside of the movie clip. I'll use the selection uh, tool now. I'll just hit V to get rid of that. And you can see the buttons are repeated and these are two separate instances they run on their own they have their own controls so let's test the movie and you can see it work and so each one of these is independent we can stop one while the other's playing we can step one forward step one backwards they run completely independent of each other and we can use this movie clip over and over in this movie or we can copy and put in other movies as we need let's go back and take a look at the movie clip that we built and let me just position this over here. So this is what we built, and these are two instances of it. Well, you have multiple design options for building your movie clips, and what actions you put inside and what controls you put inside the movie clip versus what you decide should be outside the movie clip and only work with the instances will depend on your actual project needs.